got my snake hook ready. I'm gonna take him out and hopefully he won't bite my face. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Taylor and I am pissed off. So I did a video where I showed you guys all of my snakes earlier today. I recorded that. I was happy with it. I was really feeling the video. I thought it was good. I got through all my snakes. They were really cute. I really liked the video. I was really happy with it. Kiara, why are you sniffing my elbow? See, the thing is though, Kiara, please stop sniffing my elbow. See, the thing is though, I went to go edit that video, right? I went to go do that. 90% of it is out of focus. Like, how does a camera stay out of focus? How is a camera that bad at focusing? But then I remembered, I dropped this camera a few days ago. So, I just screwed everything up. I hope you guys are having a good Halloween. Here's some pumpkins, so it's officially a Halloween video. There we go. I get to refilm this video. I don't know how much I'm gonna really refilm, how much footage I'm gonna use from earlier, so it's gonna be a little weird. Some moments I'm gonna be sitting over here, other moments I'll be sitting in my bed. This is a weird video. I'm a perfectionist though, and I am not gonna release something where I'm out of focus, okay? I'm just not gonna do that. So then I go and I re-record the intro, and there's freaking lipstick on my tooth. So then I'm like, okay, I can't use that footage. So now I'm here. I started filming at 9 a.m. It's 5 p.m. now. The thing is, is, I love making videos, so I'm not really complaining. I'm not mad about filming. I love showing you guys my life. I love showing you guys animals. I love talking to you guys about animals. I'm not really complaining about filming. I'm just complaining that I have to refilm the same video and that it's 5 p.m. and I still haven't gotten this video up and I wanted it up way earlier. Basically, I wanted to apologize in advance for this video being a complete mess. I thought this video was gonna be put together so much better, but I look like I'm going through a midlife crisis and it's 5 p.m. and I still have to brief film and it was all out of focus and there was lipstick on my tooth. I don't really know what's going on at this point. I just hope to get it up at some point today. That'd be cool. You're probably all gonna be out doing Halloween stuff, but so that's what that's what I'm upset about today. Also, my dog keeps like smelling my arm. So today's video is supposed to be about my snakes. I'm gonna show you all of my snakes. I have six of them now. The thing, stop sniffing my elbow! The reason I wanted to make a video talking about all my snakes is because one year ago, I wasn't even allowed to have snakes. My parents were very against owning snakes in the house, my mom particularly. More so, she was worried about, like, she just thought they were, like, escape artists that could just get out and be free and blah blah blah. So, she wasn't too big on snakes. But times have changed and now I own six. So I really just wanted to do a video where I show you guys all of my snakes. This is not going to be a how to take care of all six of my snakes video. This is just introducing them. I have not been owning snakes that long and I really did not want to just repeat facts that I had read online to you guys because I don't know how true or not they are. I need to experience taking care of these animals myself before I start preaching to you guys about how to take care of these animals, you know? So that's why I haven't done any snake care videos. This is my first year owning snakes. I really wanted to get some experience in before I start educating you guys about how to take care of them. So in this video, I will be showing you guys my snakes and some basic facts about them, but I will not be teaching you how to take care of them. So far, I do wanna say I've had an amazing year with my snakes. They've all shed great, they all eat great. I've had no issues whatsoever with any of them. So I think what I am doing is going really well, but I just wanna give it some time before I start showing, you know, teaching you guys things, you know? So I will start getting into these care videos about how to take care of snakes pretty soon because I know you guys have been asking for them but I'm just there's some species that I'm just not quite comfortable with yet for example ball pythons there's so much online you're gonna read that contradicts each other about their care all these different opinions about what's best for them and I really want to give myself a lot of time to make sure that what I am doing is what I believe is best for them compared to other information that's out there I will say my ball pythons have been doing great just like all my other snakes but again I just want to give myself a little bit of time Real quick before I do get into the snakes, I want you guys to know that this video is sponsored by Honey. Honey is a free extension for your web browser that helps you find the best deals and best prices for anything you're looking for online. Once you install Honey on your web browser, you can save money on all your purchases without having to do any- Honey is super easy to install, and once you- Honey is super easy to install, and once you do, it'll help you find the best deals for everything without you having to do anything extra yourself. Personally, I know I'm always looking for the best deals for everything because I don't spend my money too great. Every time I go to check out on a website before I actually press, you know, pay, I always check online to see if there's any deals available out there or discount codes. The cool thing about Honey is it'll do it all for you and save you the trouble. Even on Amazon, Honey will always help you find the best prices for what you're looking for. If you find something you like but it's available somewhere else on Amazon for cheaper, Honey will find that price for you automatically 
and let you know. Basically, if there's a discount code out there, Honey will find it for you. Honey also shows you the price history of the items you're looking for, so it'll let you know if right now is the best time to really be buying it. Honey is absolutely free to use and download, and it is super easy. Literally, you just go to joinhoney.com slash TND, make an account for yourself, and you are good to go. Now, Honey only works on your computer, so please make sure you're trying to install it on your computer and not your phone. Install Honey on your browser to start automatically saving money today by going to joinhoney.com slash TND. So I'm gonna put these little guys away now and we're gonna get into the snakes. It's five o'clock and there's already trick-or-treaters. Since when did Halloween start this early? I just, it's so early. Wait till the sun goes down. Come on, wait till things get spooky. So here we have Celia and Celia is a Western hog nose. Here she is. She has definitely grown a lot since I first purchased her. She was a lot smaller. When I first bought her, she was eating one pinky and then she started eating two pinkies and now she eats a fuzzy. Western hog noses are incredibly easy to take care of, but they do have some temperament issues. She's gotten a lot better, but she used to really hate me. Uh, she used to be a brat. Oh, she's hissing at me right now. Oh, okay. Well, she's still a little bit of a brat, so we're working on it. Western hog noses are technically considered... Okay, you gotta calm yourself, Celia. They are technically considered venomous, but it's extremely mild. In the wild, they do eat a lot of amphibians, such as frogs, and that's really what the venom is most potent to. The worst thing that can happen is you would swell up wherever the injection site is. Someone's calling my house. Why do we even have a house phone anymore? Go away, I'm making a video with my snake. These guys are rear fanged, which means their fangs are in the back. Can you believe that that's what rear fanged means? I know, I can't either. That's what they are, and there's someone talking, leaving a voicemail. Whatever, hopefully you can't hear it. Like I said, this video is a mess, whatever. These guys are rear fanged, so even if they do bite, they actually have to get a pretty good grip on you in order to actually inject the venom in you. Now, Western hog noses actually can play dead if you scare them. That is gonna be their initial response. Their initial response is not going to be attack. It's actually going to be to pretend like they're dead, similar to how a possible and plays dead. These guys roll over on their backs and literally stick their tongues out and look like they are just roadkill. I really do like these guys. Females get to be around three feet, boys get to be about two and a half feet, if I remember correctly, which I believe I do. They definitely don't get that big. I think they're great snakes. I have seen people say that they have sometimes feeding issues. Mine eats like a maniac. My favorite thing about western hognoses are their keeled scales. Their scales are very similar to how a rattlesnake's scales are. They're very bumpy and rigid. The pattern of their scales and the shape of them are a little different than other kinds of snakes, such as the ball python. These guys have scales that are called keeled scales. Another thing I absolutely adore about the Western hognose is their little hognose. She's not gonna like this, but I'm trying to show you guys. Oh, she actually didn't give a fuss. So as you can see, it's pointed. I love that, I think it's adorable. What are you sniffing? Sniffing my nose? Next up, we have Maui. If I am correct, he's about seven to eight months old. He is my pastel pied ball python. Now the words pastel pied ball python is basically what his morph is. So he is a pastel, which is what this coloration is right here. And then he is a pied, which means he has some parts of his body that are completely white. There's not something wrong with him. I have some people sometimes ask me if he's in shed and that's why he's like this. This is actually just his color. Now Maui eats rat pups right now. I think he's about to move up to small rats actually. And he eats once a week. His enclosure is incredibly simple because ball pythons are actually extremely timid and that's where the name ball python comes from. They are known to ball up when they're scared rather than attack. They like to hide their face and let roll up in a little ball. Their enclosure consists of one side that is warm and another side that's room temperature and a water dish for them to soak in. Since ball pythons can potentially get to be about four feet, people always think they need to get these big elaborate setups, but really the simpler the better because these guys will get stressed when they're in large enclosures. Ball pythons come in a lot of different morphs. I literally mean a lot probably doesn't even really cover it. There's so many different morphs of ball pythons that exist out there. This guy right here was about a $400 morph. But ball pythons really do start out at like $40. I've seen ball pythons for sale for as little as $30, but I've also seen them for as expensive as $10,000. It's crazy the range of prices there are out there depending on the morph. Now ball pythons are known to be extremely picky eaters and sometimes even go off their food and completely reject. You know, they go on these hunger strikes where they don't eat for months if they decide suddenly they want live food. Personally, I have had no experience of this happening. Both of my ball pythons eat frozen. They eat it great. They eat it every week and they shed amazing 
amazing. They have these perfect full sheds, which is always a sign that the snake is healthy and that the temperature and humidity in their tank is good. I personally had no issues, but I have heard from many, many people that it is known to be a common thing. So it's always good if you're looking for a ball python to find one that's already eating frozen because that's a good sign that they are not the pickiest of eaters. Now Maui definitely has gotten bigger since I first got him. He is not done growing. He will get bigger than this. Now next up we have Louis, who is another ball python. Louis was named after Louis Vuitton. He is a firefly clown ball python, and the reason I named him Louis Vuitton is because he's incredibly expensive. And the joke was is that he is considered a designer snake, so he's kind of like a designer bag, but he's alive. Because a lot of Louis Vuitton purses are actually made out of python, so yeah. Not cool. I wouldn't, you won't catch me buying one of those ever. The only thing that I have somewhat noticed about Louis is the shape of his face is a little different. Now this may just be because of the pattern, so it's some kind of illusion, but also there is this thing that is considered a deformity in ball pythons called duck billing. Now duck billing is not known to affect them in any negative way. They still eat fine, they grow fine, they shed fine, they live a perfectly fine life. But it basically just means their jaw is shaped a little differently. Now I'm not positive that this is what's going on with him. He may be perfectly normal, but but that is just an observation I have made. He also does have an eyebrow. It's funny, if you look at him from this side, he looks permanently upset because he has that little eyebrow right above his eye, which is a cute little design, I think. Now this guy, like I said, is considered a designer ball python. Firefly ball pythons normally go for sale at around $2,200 or more. They are definitely a more expensive morph. Now these guys do not live together. You definitely should not ever house ball pythons together unless it's for breeding purposes. And even in that situation, you need to have a proper setup specifically for breeding, you can't just throw them together and hope for the best. This guy is one that people often think I don't have anymore because I don't talk about him that much. This is Toast. His name was actually a joke. For a long time, I named my animals after Disney characters. It's still kind of a running thing, but not as consistent as I used to be. And I was telling my mom I was having a hard time finding a name for him that, you know, was Disney character. But she recommended naming him Brave Little Toaster. So I whirled with it and I named him Toast. Now, Toast is a Kenyan sand boa. I don't take him out that much because he is so small and he spends all of his life buried in the aspen that he lives in. It's so hard to go through the whole cage, dig it out, destroy it, rip it up to try to find his little body in there. So normally I choose to just leave him alone. Now Toast is definitely the smallest snake I own. My Mexican black king snake is about the same size right now, but will get to be about three feet, while this guy is only gonna get to be about a foot and a half. He's the only snake I've ever had problems feeding. I do have to feed him outside of his enclosure, put him in a shoebox for at least an hour to get him to eat. And that'd be the only reason I would not recommend them for beginners, but otherwise they are so simple. Literally just five inches of aspen in their enclosure, one side with a heat pad and the other side without and a watering dish, and that's really all they need. You won't see them much. They're gonna live most of their life in aspen. It's really gonna look like you have bought a cage full of aspen and nothing in there, so just keep that in mind. You're not gonna see them much. They're incredibly slow growers, so you're gonna have a small snake for a really long time if you buy a baby. These guys actually don't live on pure sand in the wild, although their name is a Kenyan sand boa. They live in a mixture of dirt, sand, and other kinds of substrate. So really, keeping them on aspen is perfectly fine, and I find to be a much better method than keeping them on sand. Sand doesn't hold their tunnels very well, and if they do eat in there, they can become incredibly impacted from the sand. They won't be able to pass the sand properly through their body, and it can kill them. Toast was my very first snake. He's what started it all. I love him, but I honestly don't even know if he's grown at all since I've got him. He has shed several times, and eats every week and a half, but he just does not grow. They are very, very slow growers. So I'm not gonna pick my favorite snake that I own, but I will pick my favorite species that I own. Somehow that's a difference to me. I am in love with Mexican black King snake. This is a male, so he won't get quite as big as the females get, but he will still get to be around three feet, and he will be all black like this, and I just love how that looks. It's my little gothic snake, and I love him. He just reminds me of the way my heart looks. His name is Salem, and I love him so much. I love the all black color. I actually got him for free. It was actually when I found Louie at a reptile expo. Um, I told the guy, I really like Louie, but look, I came here for a Mexican black king snake, so he told me, if you buy Louie, I'll give you a Mexican black king snake for free. So it all worked out. I definitely really love these guys and I am super confident in my setup for him. So I think I will do a care video about these guys pretty soon. Now this last snake I am not gonna bring out here. I'm actually gonna use the footage I filmed earlier. So hopefully it's not too messed up. My next and last snake is a green tree python. They're incredibly skittish. They don't really need to be taken out that much and especially not too far away from their enclosures. So I don't feel comfortable bringing them all the way over here to show you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the footage that I filmed, you know, 
two feet away from his enclosure. So here's that. So I have saved the most aggressive for last. I have a green tree python. He is a baby, his name is Sabor. Not really quite sure if it's a boy or a girl yet, too young to sex. He is definitely an observation animal, one that I like to just watch exist. But it is not absolutely terrible to take them out of their enclosure every so often. He eats in his enclosure, so I don't have to take him out for that. But every so often, if you just wanna snap a picture or something, I don't think it's awful to take them out to get a picture and put them right back away. But you know how like ball pythons can just sit on you and you can relax and they just like wrap around you? You can't do that with a green tree python. These things will bite the crap out of you. They are not your friend. They don't really like you. But I am gonna get them out to show you guys. So I got my snake hook ready. I'm gonna take him out and hopefully he won't bite my face. All right, this is Sabor. He is a baby Bayak green tree python. Now you may notice this green tree python is not green. He is yellow. That's because he's a baby. Green tree pythons can be born green, red, or yellow. And when they grow up, they turn green, no matter what. So this guy is not gonna look like this forever. He is gonna turn green when he is an adult. Sometimes they even turn a little bluish, but they definitely don't stay yellow. Now these guys I do not recommend for beginners. They need a very specific temperature and humidity, and they bite a lot, they're not friendly, and you can't hold them, and they're extremely fragile. Okay, this is not focusing. And they are extremely fragile. They can hurt their spines very easily, and then they'll end up dying. One cool thing about them is they have a prehensile tail. So you see right there, that little, this little piece that isn't yellow? That's his prehensile tail, and he'll use it to grab onto things. I don't know why he decided to get off the snake hook and go all over me like this. Let's see if I can get him back on here. I don't want you on me, I don't wanna hurt you. So that is these guys. Sabor did poop on me right after I walked away, so my hand smells awful. Too much info, I'm sorry. And that's it, so I hope you guys have a wonderful Halloween. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. I'm 80,000 away from a million, which is crazy because last October, I don't even think I had 80,000 subscribers at all. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. I love you guys so much. Leave a comment with what your favorite snake was out of all the ones I own because I love to see what you guys think. And I hope you guys have had a great Halloween and a great October. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe because I make a lot of fun animal videos with all different kinds of animals. Even if snakes aren't your thing, trust me, I have plenty of other animals to talk about. If snakes are your thing, don't worry because I love snakes, so I talk about them a lot because I'm obsessed with them. So. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. I don't know what's happening right now. Hello and welcome to the video. Good intro. Um.